Have you ever been sitting there just watching American Ninja Warrior and wondered to yourself, how would a pedophile do on this show? <laughs> Pretty fucking good. Dude won like 10 seasons in a row. He was strong as shit. Oh, wait, I got my scripts mixed up. That's the next 10 seasons. Have you ever been sitting there watching American Ninja Warrior and wondered to yourself, how would a pro climber do on this show? Well, that's exactly what we found out with American Ninja Warriors USA versus the world. It's Japan versus the US versus Europe. On Team Japan, we got five regular blue collar workers, right? Just some working class dudes, really, you know, living out the spirit of what Ninja Warrior is all about. And on Team America, we got five dudes who quit their jobs to be full-time ninjas. He gave up his job to win American Ninja Warrior. Oh! And that didn't work out. And who did Europe bring, you might be wondering? Well, Europe really decided to step up their game because they brought five professional athletes, two of them being pro climbers, Sean McCall and Stefano Gasolfi. I know some of you are gonna give me shit in the comments for saying Stefano instead of Stefano. Uh, I lived in Italy for five years. Never once heard any Italian say Stefano. They all say Stefano, all right? Now the way USA vs. the world works is you got three rounds. Each round has three heats. The winner of each round gets either one, two, or three points. It's, it, you'll figure it out as the video goes on. Let's move in to round one. America's up first on round one with the weatherman. And he's basically the only dude from America that uh, actually still has a job. And just right off the bat, the American comes in and sets a new course record for round one. So you think, okay, America definitely won this round. No way anybody's gonna beat that dude just broke the record. But you haven't heard the next competitor yet. This is the most dangerous competitor in the entire show. He's the only athlete to compete in all 30 seasons of Sasuke. Did I hear that correctly? They say this dude's been on 30 seasons of Suzuki Ninja Warrior. How is he even allowed to be on this at this point? At a certain point, they just somebody's gotta just pull this guy to the side and be like, go home. Like if this guy's here, nobody even stands a chance. This dude's been around since the fucking Edo period, just training fucking ninja warrior skills. Uh, there's no way he's gonna lose. <laughs> so Japan's off to a bit of a rough start, but next up is Team Europe. And if they can beat the record that was just beaten by the American, they get a point. So Europe brings out their gymnast and this dude, this dude's fucking stacked. This dude <laughs> is a big dude. And for his first time on a Ninja Warrior course, he did pretty good. Dude was jumping around, did the warp wall, fucking yeeted his shoe across the arena, but he was a little bit too slow. So USA got one point. So it's time for the second heat of round one, time for Japan to get a little bit of redemption. They didn't do so good in the first heat, but that's all right. This guy's another experienced ninja and he's coming out, he's ready to play. But comes up short on the first attempt and misses again. I'm not sure what he has left. And his third attempt also comes up short. So Japan's not off to a great start, but next up is Europe's Tim Schief. Tim Scheif, chef. I don't know what his name is. He's a parkour professional athlete. For those of you that don't know what parkour is, it's basically just rock climbing without the rock or the climbing. I hope that helps. But Tim comes in here and absolutely steamrolls round one. Not only does he just uh, run consistently through the entire course, but he also breaks the record that was just broken by an additional 10 seconds. So the Americans know if they want to win the second heat, they really got to step up, right? Like they can't be goofing around, no lollygagging. They basically got to get a sub one minute round one. So the American athlete just goes super sand, just starts flying through the course and yeets himself off the zip line and just gets disqualified. So Europe wins heat two, making the score one to one. After this, we have a pretty uneventful third heat. Uh, USA finishes the course in a pretty unremarkable time. Japan fails again, and uh, Europe brings in this dude who looks like a little kid lost in a grocery store who just times out. <laughs> he like, can't figure out what's going on. So round one is finally over with the score of two to one to zero. But nobody's out of this game yet because round two, each heat is worth two points. So anybody could come back at this point. It's anybody's game. But I know a lot of you are probably like, wait a minute climbing stuff. How are you even watching this right now? Uh, ever since that pedophile dude was on Ninja Warrior, they wiped, they, they wiped the hard drives, right? They deleted his existence. You can't find any of this footage. Anything before like season 100 of Ninja Warrior, you can't watch. Well, I have a little bit of a secret weapon that I like to call NordVPN. What is a VPN exactly? I'll keep it simple for you guys. It basically allows you to pretend to be somebody from somewhere else while you're on the internet. I'm sitting here trying to watch American Ninja Warrior, but 
Oh, what's this? You can't watch it anywhere in the US. But uh, with one click of a button, now I'm Polish. Dziękuję. And in Poland, they don't enforce copyright laws nearly as much. So I can sit and watch as much Ninja Warrior as I want. Is that ethical? Uh, I'm Polish. I don't give a shit. You want to hop online and watch Master of Masters? Oh, wait, you can't watch it unless you're Norwegian? Wow, that seems kind of xenophobic. Well, guess what? Now I'm Norwegian. I can watch it as much as I want. I've been using NordVPN for five years now. I saw a PewDiePie video five years ago and I was like, you know what? I'll try it out. I'll click the link. I'll get my free trial and I'll just cancel it when I'm done. And I was never done. I use this shit all the time. NordVPN is awesome. So if you click the link in the description below, you'll get four months of free NordVPN. Plus it's risk-free. They have a 30 day money back guarantee. You can watch all the shows you want. And if you're still not satisfied, just get your money back. You won't because you're going to get addicted to watching whatever the hell you want on Netflix because they got everything on Netflix. Let me tell you something, a little secret scam of Netflix. Everything's on there. They just region lock all the shows. You got NordVPN, watch whatever you want. So let's open up NordVPN and get back to round two. So moving into round two, Japan's really got to step up their game, right? They got to shift into 12th gear if they have any chance of winning this. So, you know, they bring their A game. You've got to explode on your jump. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for, our second contestant for round two, Stefano Gasolfi. First up is the rope course. He's a pro climber. What did you expect? He flies right through that thing. Second up, we got the salmon ladder. Salmon ladder is just a bunch of little dinos. Look at that, the bar uneven and Gasolfi misses. All right, before you guys are all like surprised Pikachu about Stefano falling, let me just say that this is a, a old video. This, this is not new, this is not current events. He was 21 when this was made. He was just a little baby. This was before Excalibur, La Dura Dura, uh, freaking bibliography, whatever, uh, all the 515 C's and all that nonsense he's done. This is just a young man trying to make it in the world. But because Stefano fell so early, the USA just has their guy crawl through this course like slow as shit to take two points for the first heat of round two. Now for the second heat of round two, we got our boy Tim back. You know, Tim out here scoring points, the only one scoring points for Team Europe at this point. And Tim, uh, he, he's pretty good at Ninja Warrior. Wow, look at that leap. He cruises up the salmon ladder, makes it across the hanging platforms, and even successfully finishes the spinning butterfly obstacle that the other competitor gave themselves a concussion on. And Tim makes it all the way to the hardest obstacle, the metal spin. A low leap and he hits the water. So Tim didn't quite complete the course, but he made it to the very end, the second to last obstacle. And you're probably wondering, well, how's Japan doing at this point? And after 53 seconds, his arms just gave out. So to score another two points in round two, the Americans just have to finish the course. It doesn't matter how fast they do it. So once again, they have a guy just kind of crawl through the entire thing, makes it through the whole course, and the US gets another two points. So heat three is just around the corner and there's a lot on the line. This is comeback territory. It's six to one to zero. Team Europe really has to score some points here if they have any chance of winning this competition. But Let's, you know, let's not forget about Japan. They're still in the running. And became the second straight Japanese competitor to fail on the rope jungle. And as if things couldn't get any worse for Team Europe and Team Japan, the US competitor finishes the entire course again and does it in two minutes and six seconds, which it's a pretty tough time to beat. So any chance of a comeback lies in one man's hands, Team Europe's third heat competitor, Sean McCall. For those of you that don't know who Sean McCall is, he is a comp climbing god. Look at this backflip he does here. This has nothing to do with comp climbing, but uh, holy shit, that's wild. So Sean steps up, flies through the rope course, fastest time we've seen yet, gets to the salmon ladder, bunch of, bunch of little dinos to Sean, cruises up the salmon ladder as if it wasn't even there. And I know you're probably like, what about the panel transition? Uh, he's gonna fall on the, pa the, the panel jump thing, right? Uh, you mean the panel dino? Oh, look at that transition, the front side of the board. Holy shit, Sean is flying through this course, but he's still gotta do uh, the, the butterfly obstacle, the one it's knocking everybody out. Is he gonna be able to make the jump? Uh, you mean the dino? Oh boy, showing off his athleticism. Oh my God, he's gonna do the entire course. All he's got left is the hardest obstacle. Everyone's been falling on it though. Is he gonna be able to do the metal spin? 
You mean the metal dot. He's got to get high on the metal spin, Matt. A good jump. Oh, Are you spin. kidding me? Yeah, this dude is absolutely horrified at what just happened. He was like, hey, mom, I got a 206 on round two. Nobody's going to be able to beat that. <laughs> Sean McCall just dumps all over his 206, getting a sub two minute and winning round two, bringing Team Europe to three points. So now we move on to round three, but round three is a little tricky. It's got a little bit of extra information you might not have known. No one has ever completed round three in the history of American Ninja Warrior. And remember, no American has ever finished stage three. And first up competing in round three is Team Japan. And I know you're probably like, why are they still here? They, they have no chance. Well, actually, each heat in round three is worth three points. So not only is Japan still in this, but they can actually still win. Oh, he's in trouble here already. And look at that, Hase is out! So next up is Team Europe. And you remember that gymnast with a body uh, like Zeus? He's up next, and he absolutely destroys round three. Incredible performance by Kuvikin, and there's a the transition, look at that, left hand. But about halfway through round three, they save the hardest obstacle. This is the obstacle that makes it so that nobody has ever completed round three. The hardest obstacle in American Ninja Warrior, the V3 bouldering wall. He's not using his legs at all. Look, the he's using gas in his all kicking upper hand. body though. Oh! This is why I love doing this series because it really is fascinating to watch people who are out of their element around any actual type of like rock climbing and just how athletic they are, how much they are capable of. But then something like a simple overhang V3 boulder will just chuck them off the wall. I mean, literally right before this, he had to do this like crimp campus dino boulder and he just uh, cruised right through it like it was nothing. But when it takes actual technique to have, know what's going on and actually complete the challenge, they just, they can't do it. They can't, you forget how hard rock climbing actually is once you've done it for a while. But I mean, it, it's, it's kind of ridiculous. But thankfully for Team Europe, the, uh, the American makes it about just as far as the Japanese athlete did. So we're all tied up. It's six to six, Team Europe and Team America. Japan still has zero points, but technically, technically, if Japan can just get two wins on the third heat, it'll be all tied up. They're not out of this yet. So Japan brings out their dark horse and this guy actually knows how to rock climb. So he actually makes it through what's considered the hardest part of round three and makes it all the way through the third round being the first person to ever finish round three. The first athlete ever to complete stage three. So finally a win for Team Japan. They're basically guaranteed to win this heat. Nobody's ever completed round three. Somebody would have to also complete round three in the exact same heat. Uh, there's no way they can lose. And I was right, Team America goes up. Dude, once again, can't rock climb. So falls on the, the, the nightmarish V3 boulder problem, which leaves the last competitor for heat number two, Stefano Gasolfi. So Stefano makes it to the weird campus boulder thing. He absolutely cruises right through that. But we all know what comes after that. The hardest obstacle. I know I've said this before, I cannot stress to you enough. This is the hardest obstacle in American Ninja Warrior history with the highest failure rate. Can Stefano send the V3 boulder wall? And the rock climber making this obstacle look easy. So using his professional rock climbing skills, Stefano just does dino after dino after dino and finishes round three, being the second person to ever finish round three in the same heat as the first person to ever finish round three. And he also finishes it in a faster time, meaning that Team Japan does not get their three points. Their three points actually go to Team Europe, putting Team Europe in first place with a score of nine to six to zero. At this point, Japan's just getting fucked, right? <laughs> like there's nothing they can do to win, but they don't want to get zero points. They just, they just don't want to get shut out. So they send their next guy in and guess what? He also finishes all of round three. He is the third competitor ever to finish round three. There is no way that Japan does not get at least three points. But Japan forgot about one thing. Team Europe's next competitor was Sean McCall. And Sean McCall absolutely dominated round three. He had the fastest time, cruised through every single obstacle. He even, 
he even made it through the V3 bouldering wall. Can you believe that? He was able to make it through the hardest obstacle in American Ninja history. God did not want Team Japan to win this. They never, never stood a chance. At this point, all Sean has to do is make it through the horizontal salmon ladder. And look at him so comfortable here on the floor. Oh, and just like that, he misses. So technically, since Sean didn't finish round three, Team Japan still has a chance to win the third heat, right? They can get three points up on the board and secure the win for Team Europe. It's all up to Team America, who has not had great runs on round three so far. So uh, we pretty much already know what the outcome is going to be. But Team America has a little bit of a surprise. Their final contestant knows how to rock climb. He just has to stay alive here on stage three. Somehow, the American contestant also manages to finish round three, being the fourth competitor in history to finish round three. What are the odds that uh, Japan has two of the four competitors to ever finish round three in the same heats as the two other competitors that are the only ones to finish round three? And both their times were slower. So Team Japan loses the third heat again and team america gets another three points bringing us to a score of nine to nine meaning it's time for a tiebreaker but how do you settle a tiebreaker in american ninja warrior well there's only one way a 77 foot rope climb on team europe we have sean mccall and on team usa we have guy with the soul patch and uh to my surprise soul patch guy was really, really fast. He flew up that rope and made it all the way to the top with the time of 35.77 seconds, which if you do the math, that's like more than two feet per second, which on a rope climb is pretty impressive. For you Europeans, uh, two feet per second, like, it's like 40 joules per Pascal. It's, it's wild how fast he was going. So Team Europe and Team Rock Climbing's fate is all in the hands of Sean McCall. But the question is, how fast can a pro climber Climb a rope. Oh, and he's using his feet early. 20 seconds! Two seconds! He did it! So Sean McCall secures the victory. Team Europe and Team Rock Climbing win American Ninja Warrior, USA versus the world. Uh, the, the announcers were like trying really hard to make it sound like the only reason the American contestant lost was because he missed the button on the first swing, right? He was slapping around for a second. And I thought this was kind of like bullshit at first. I was like, he would have lost either way, but I, I broke down the footage and it was actually extremely close. I, I actually can't tell who would have won. There's a chance that if he hit the buzzer on his first uh, slap thing, he might've actually won. So our final breakdown, Sean and Stefano together scored five out of nine of Europe's total points, plus, Sean also got the rope climb, which if we're following the, the, the consistency of one to two to three points, the rope climb was worth about four points for the team, meaning that the two rock climbers scored nine out of 13 points for Team Europe. I'm really just trying to uh, justify titling the video, Pro Climbers Dominate American Ninja Warrior. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you want to watch some of this stuff yourself, get NordVPN. It's that easy. Four months free. Try it out.